Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel. Um, I am Heather Carew and I am um, Freckles Fiber, Fiber Arch. You can find me on Etsy and I'll be launching my website soon so that you can kind of see some things either that I'm working on or if you want to purchase some patterns that I have um, or if you want to check out some free stuff that I've got on my website as well. Um, so this tutorial is dedicated to um, creating pumpkins. Um, my in-laws are from Pumpkin. Um, pumpkin town south carolina and so it's kind of inspired me to create some different pumpkin related things and and um i talk about maybe the craft fair that i did this fall um it's called the ant hat festival in fountain Inn. i've done it with my mom for years since i was little we've always gone to ant hat i grew up in fountain Inn. so anyways that being said so these are some things that i've created and what type of yarn works well and um how you can create it by hand or if you have a knitting machine so um the first thing that i'm going to show you is like my very first one i didn't even i didn't even sell it um because it was not you know anytime you first create something it looks you know you can always better it. I feel like whenever I create something, I'm like, mm, that didn't really turn out. But then I tried again and I get better and better and better and so on. So I've created, I think this fall, I created over a hundred of the pumpkins. This was my very first one. I will probably not sell it just because A, it doesn't look great. You can see the um, stuffing in the inside. And, you know, it's my first, th my first try. I like to have that to keep me grounded like hey you know it takes time to get better at something so anyways and and um i'll show you i'll tell you some things that i didn't like when i first started so for example like i should have held this yarn double and it would have prevented all of these holes and um and in fact if you're using a knitting machine what i've noticed if you have thinner yarn either you can hold it double which will help prevent um skipping of stitches which occurs a lot for me at least when I'm trying to go quickly or if I'm tired I'm not really paying attention to what's going on um skip stitches tend to happen more um so or you can fold it in on itself so like if you make like a tube you can kind of fold it in so that it's it's basically double now that you're you've tucked it in on itself and then pulling it as I'm going to show you in the tutorial. Um, so, anyways, first one, first try, not so bad, but still it doesn't quite look like a pumpkin. Pumpkin. So all of these sold except for this one, the sparkly yarn. So I'm going to show you, um, and I'm going to tell you which brand it was. And I'm, they still have it at Hobby Lobby, to be honest. I, I'm a big advocate of. Um, discounting sales, finding anything on sale. So when I do find a sale, I might buy that yarn and not know exactly what I'm going to use with it. Well, now I know every time I'm like, oh my goodness, that would look really cute as a pumpkin. Um, because the great thing about creating like the same thing over and over again, you can try different types of yarns and see what works best. But with uh, creating like something that is, I I've noticed this too with it creating stuff to sell like i know like i like these like shaws for myself but they really don't sell that much at at um festivals or any kind of like show that you're doing what sells is something that everybody can relate to it doesn't matter the color it can be fun and that's what i did in my last art fair and i it just went really well and so that's what i'm gonna try and do next time is just kind of be a little bit more creative with my colors that i use so um this was a dazzling yarn from hobby lobby and i had it in my stash for a while and i've been trying to figure out what i'm going to use the rest of it because i have just a few more skeins left um and you can check out my Etsy. I'm kind of trying to clear out my stash, some of the things that I'm not really using or I have a lot of. And I know I probably won't use all of it. Um, so check out Etsy if you are interested in buying some of this dis discontinued yarn. Um, but this was called Dazzling. And I loved it because it gives this ombre look, which makes the pumpkins look really cool. Um, I've got all these bright colors left over. And that's um, one of the things that I've used to create pumpkins, which really, I mean, to be honest, the colors looked really neat in the art fair. So be creative, try something new. That's what I'm saying. So, so another yarn that I um, purchased was called Bloom 
And I, I've always wanted to try it because it's kind of like a self-striping, but it actually puts flowers within your pattern. And so what was really cool about it is when I created the pumpkin with it, first of all, it was probably my favorite with the um, Addy knitting machine that I have. It was my favorite yarn because it really didn't skip stitches all that much. And I, I guess because of the way the yarn was, and then it made it so full and it did this really cool pattern when I created it. So this was one that I like pulled to the side because I just, I thought it was kind of neat. Um, and I was going to give it to my um, niece for her, um, for her birthday or for her Easter basket. Even though it is a pumpkin, it still looks really cute and colorful. And, um, you know, I really like the way that came out and I would have never tried it um, had it been for me just trying to like use up my stash, like figure out what yarn works and, and what, what came quickly because in an art fair, you want stuff that can turn out really quick. And so this was another one that I used. So these two were created with one ball. So I was able to create these two pumpkins and then I would crochet the stem. And so I'm going to go through that in like the tutorial, how to crochet the stem. Um, also I wanted to show you, um, another type of yarn that I use. I had a little bit left over from a couple of years ago and, um, I did, I, 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 I did get this from, um, Hobby Lobby and it was a hand dyed yarn and I just had a little bit and I held it double with my, um, color idol. And that is also on Etsy. I'm trying to clear out a few of those, um, yarns, but it is a wool yarn and I think it turned out really, really good. Most of these sold, but I made a bunch of them um, because I did hold the yarn double with another color. Um, and I believe I'm looking around, I think it's around like, I mean, there's almost 400 yards within that hand dyed yarn. And um, it went a long way. Like I made a, I made a bunch of these pumpkins with just that yarn. And it's just mainly just trying to, like I said, clean up my stash. If you don't know what you're going to do with some yarn that's left over from, like, maybe you did a blanket project or something, I am going to suggest, like, make these pumpkins. They're fun, and you can they can go really quick once you get started. So those were the ones that were left over from my art fair, which, I mean, like I said, I made a hun almost 100 of them. And this is... At first, it was taking a long time, and then after a while, it just started. I started to make them a little bit quicker, um, and then I did notice the ones that I put faces on were almost the ones that sold like at the very beginning. I think because people could relate to them, or the ones with like the multicolored like rainbow. Um, also, I, I forgot to mention like I, this one right here, black. It was totally fine. It's just that like. You can see it and it's because of the contrasting colors. Um, I really wish that there was some like stuffing available for any type of like plushy, but maybe like a darker color instead of white. It would be really cool if there was a company that created that. Uh, I don't know if there already is, but the one store that's close to our house is a uh, one craft store. I mean, we have a lot, but the one that I usually go to um, is is Hobby Lobby and they only had white and I've gone to Michael's but I don't know Michael's needs to step up their fiber art game because I just don't I just don't know I don't like I don't I don't like some of their yarn selections sometimes they're really pricey I have bought a couple though from their from the yarn store anyway so with that being said, I'm going to go ahead and go over a tutorial on how to create the pumpkins using a knitting machine. Um, I will also be talking about how you can do it by hand, um, but I always like to take something that I love to make and maybe try and put it into the um, knitting machine and see how it turns out. Like I've made a cardigan with the knitting machine versus hand knitting, and um, to be honest, I really prefer hand making it. Um, but if it's something that I'm trying to get a bunch of items up or like maybe just use up some of the yarn that I'm not sure what I'm going to do with, I pop it in the, the Addy and kind of work with it. All right. So let's go ahead and get started and, um, also like subscribe to my channel. And if you, um, haven't already contact your teachers, it's the end of the quarter. If you have a child in public or private school, it's really important to reach out to them right now and just check in on them and see if they need any more supplies. I love it when parents do that for me. I forget that they're out there and they're willing to 
support me in the classroom um, and support their child and their and the other children at the school too. Like for example, I'm a math teacher. We run out of pencils. We run out of dry erase markers. And that's just like something that we run out of tissues. Just reach out to them. If it's mid-year, trust me, we're running low on stuff. Anyways, I'm going to go ahead and get started and um, happy pumpkin making. Okay. All right. So I'm getting my Addy set up and um, I'm just kind of locking it in place. I really don't like it when it moves around when I'm trying to use it. So anyways, I'm going to go ahead and do that now and um, get that all set up. And let me see. All right. So we're getting it all set up to make our pumpkin. And what I also really like about um, this little pattern, you can make it as big or as small as you want, depending on the yarn. You can also make it, um, you know, as colorful. You can make it match your decor, whatever it may be for that year. Um, you could also... I mean, you could also color code it for this, for whatever, um, whatever season's about to come up. Um, I'm thinking about making some like red ones and pink ones just for Valentine's Day. Um, anyways, I'm going ahead and I'm using that Bloom yarn. I'm going to leave about a, a kind of a long tail because I'm going to have to use it later on. So I always do maybe about, um maybe a, maybe two, three feet, um, of yarn. And anyway, so we're going to go ahead and do that first. And then I'm going to go ahead and line my Addy up. And when you are loading your Addy, you want to do it the same way where you are kind of weaving in and out. So I don't miss any. Um, in and out. So if you were doing this by hand, you would want to get circular knitting needles that are with, you know, using the same gauge. Um, as whatever it calls for. Okay, I've worked with a couple of like knitting machines. Well, not a couple, just one other one. And then I started watching reviews online and, and then that's what made me buy this one. But I had one from Michael's. I can't remember. It was just a generic one. I wanted to try it and um, it was just not, I don't know. I couldn't get it to work right. So I returned it like three times. The lady was like, um... I think I was in line. I'm like, I'm not sure if I'm going to like this. Can I bring it back? And she was like, oh yeah, you can bring it back. So I brought it back and I said, I think it's broken because it was making all these clicking noises. And she was so sweet. She was like, oh, well, here's another one. And so I tried that one. And again, it was making these clicking noises that were just, it was going to drive me nuts. It was not going to be something that I enjoyed. So um, I returned it again and she was like, well, do you want me to try and order one? And so she ordered another one for me because she thought maybe they were both broken. And then it was making that clicking noise again. So anyways, three, third time was not a charm for Michaels. And, but the, the service was amazing. I wish I remembered her name, but she was really awesome. She really helped me a lot. Um, anyway, so I bought the Addy, but the one thing I love the Addy about is that, um, I love it because it's very, it seems very sturdy. Like it's a much sturdier than the other one. But the only thing is that the turning point, like this little uh, handle, it keeps, the screw keeps coming out. So that's why I had to pause the video so I could go get my um, little handheld screwdriver. So I could screw that little screw a little bit tighter because it may come off. Because really, to be honest, it does come off every once in a while. And it like, it messes up my flow. All right, so what you're going to do here is you're just going to continuously go around and around. And I forgot to actually reset this. What's great about this pattern, it's super, super easy. Um, and like I was saying, if you're going to knit it by hand, it takes a lot longer. It's sometimes less frustrating, though. I feel like this, anytime you add a machine involved, whether it's the computer 
or I don't know any type of technology I seem to like that or any machinery I end up breaking <laughs> in some way so um, I guess because I just use it to it's like full potential I don't know I'm not very good with machines anyways to say the least and sometimes it causes me some like frustration so knitting my hand is is a little bit better for me and you, you can see it's starting to get like kind of tight it's because of how thick this yarn is um but what's great about the pumpkin is that you can go as long as you want um i'm going to i think i'm going to stop at maybe row 50 i'm going to see where i'm at i'm only at row three right now and i did have to reset it late so i'm thinking it's row five five um and I did not, as you can see, I did not cast on any, um, like, scrap yarn. And a lot of videos will show you that. But the, what's great about this particular pattern is that you don't have to use scrap yarn. Okay? You do not have to use it. And I know that for me, whenever I'm creating this, this is already a scrap project because I'm using up scrapped yarn. You know, I'm not doing that right now. Um, you don't use scrap you do not use scrap yarn to like cast on. Oh, I just realized I lost a stitch. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and, I think this one right here. It is very, sometimes it gets very finicky and this is what causes me to have some like unwanted stress. And really this should be something that's fun. I have to remind myself, remember I'm having fun. And if I have to remind myself of that, then I probably need to do something a little bit different. And that's why I don't, I think all knitting machines sometimes cause a little bit of stress just because it's something you can't really control. All right, so we're not very far yet, but you can see that the pattern's starting to pop up. It's so cool how the bloom works. And you can see I've dropped no stitches so far. I had one little like episode that I had to like fix. And what I've noticed is as you are spinning with the knit, the Addy, your eyes should be right before it, like right before it hits this point, because then if it's not in the right, if the yarn's not in the right spot there, then it's going to pop up the stitch. Um, and as you can see, like bloom, I don't know it. Well, it works really well. And I've tried a couple of different yarns with Addy. First of all, the line brand thick and quick is just too, it's too um, thick. And um, my screw is coming out of my Addy. I'm going to pause right now and screw it back into place. Um, if if you are having the same problem, you can comment down below. But that's the only thing I do not like about Addy is that I've got to keep screwing that stupid screw back into place. All right, we're back in business, I think. I just heard a pop. All right. I am now on row 11. You can continue. I'm just going to stay on the video. For a little bit longer until we get to the end so of this last round oh goodness so frustrated when it pops like that makes me very frustrated oh i just love it because i can see all the colors coming in it makes me want to use uh this other yarn that i have that's like pattern striping but it's too, I think it's too winter looking. But I think I'm still going to try it because um, it might be neat to see it kind of come up. So I, I've done this in the past too where I'll like, I'm not sure how I want the, the, the project to look. So before I start knitting or casting on or anything, I will use the Addy to see what, what patterns are about to come up with it. Um, especially with like that sock yarn or hand dyed yarn. I'll throw it on here just so I can see what it's going to look like um, when I do spend time working on it. Because yeah, I don't know if you've ever done this, but I've started working on a project and I'm like, well, wait a minute. I don't like the way this is looking. Um, maybe I should add a color in there with it, like pair it with another color or put maybe mohair with it. And so if I'm curious and I want to see what it's going to look like with another type of yarn in it, I'll use Addy to kind of guide me on what colors look best with that particular yarn. And then it's super easy to pull out. Um, all right. So I'm going to go ahead and I am going to, oh, this is going to about to come off, I think. Yeah. Okay. 
I don't want it to do that. All right, I'll be back. You guys get to, let me see where we're at right now. All right, so I'm going to say, why don't you go ahead and get to maybe row 40. Row 40 and then come, I'll be back when I get to row 40, okay? So kind of crank it until you get to row 40 and then we'll figure out what we're going to do next. Okay, all right, so I know I said row 40, but I feel like this is starting to make a good length um, that I can work with. And I'm only at row 30, and I forgot to count my previous rows. So I'm going to go ahead and start casting off and um, creating the pumpkin. So um, row 30 looks good. It's going to be kind of small, but that's totally fine. So what you're going to do to cast off of your Addy is you're going to make sure, first of all, that you have a long tail. So like I said, um, maybe about three feet would be good. I'm just overestimating, I hope. Um, you guys realize that I'm just overestimating with that, but you do need a quite a bit of a long tail so you can go ahead and stitch things together when you are ready. Um, and now you're going to get a um, darning needle and I've got mine. I've got darning needles everywhere, to be honest. Like they, I end up like sprinkling them around like all over the house. I'll find a darning needle. Um, but then when I need one, I can't find one. <laughs> Uh, probably because I'm losing all of them. Anyway, so once you get to your 30th round, you're going to have your long tail. And this is where you're going to cast off using the Addy. So you're going to pull out of the little golden um, piece. And you're going to go around. And I love I love casting off. I think it's kind of fun. Because now, and I'm losing stuff. Um, I usually, I usually go, as, oh, I can see one that just popped off. Or I wanted it to. And make sure you don't lose any stitches. Um, so when you're casting off, you're going to go ahead and take your needle. And I kind of scoop up and pull through. And let's see. Ooh, that one's double. Oh, some of these aren't going to be fabulous like I want them to be, but that's okay. Let me see. I'm hoping I didn't miss anything. Um, scooping it on up inside the Abby Addy. And once you have all of them, you're just going to cinch it tight. So this will take a minute. And um, if you want to, you can fast forward through this part if you know how to do it. I lost one and I'm just going to, I'm just going to scoop it up where it's at. I'm not going to worry about it too much because when I cinch it tight, that's not even going to be noticeable. So this is a great project. If you just got your knitting machine and you're trying to find something quick and easy to do. Um, and I'm losing, I'm, I'm losing stitches and that's okay, but just make sure you catch it. So it doesn't get, the hole doesn't get bigger. And I probably, I mean, there's all kinds of different things that I probably am going to, I'm doing incorrect, but this is the way I did it. Okay. Um, now you can, what I've noticed, you can like go through right as it pulls off, like every few stitches, you can pop, you can pop your darning needle through and scoop that stitch up. But what I've noticed is that it takes a little bit longer and, um, Remember, this project is not supposed to be something that takes forever. And it, it's, I'm going to have to say, it's probably about a 15 to 30 minute project on Addy. And if you're knitting it by hand, it may take about two hours. Okay. And it kind of combines both knitting and crochet, which I kind of enjoy because, oh, this one's stuck. Er, I hate it when they get a little bit stuck. See, this one's stuck too. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and go with what I've got so I don't lose anything. Yeah, that one's way up in there. And then I'll show you how to get it unstuck because this happens um, with thicker yarn. And maybe this yarn's way too thick for Addy, but we're still going with it. We're pushing the, pushing the envelope. And that's probably why it gets a little stuck every once in a while because it's thicker than what it needs to be. Um are just needed. All right, so let's get this one off. 
And then I think that's the last one. I just need to get this one stuck. So this one's stuck. And this little guy's stuck. Boop. And hopefully I got something to hold it. All right, so now once you've once you've done this, I'm gonna go ahead and move my little Addy out of the way, or my big Addy. This Addy is a big one. Um, and we're gonna say goodbye because we're no longer gonna need it. All right, so say goodbye to Addy. And now for the fun part, the fun part would be where you're actually gonna do stuff by hand. So this is what I would do. I would when I was making a couple of them, I would sit for maybe about an hour or so, and I'd pump out a few um, of these. Let me pull it a little bit tighter. I'd pump out a few of these little pumpkins, these little tubes, these little tubes. All right. Ooh, I'm pulling it tight. I don't want it to get tangled. Don't want it to be tangled with the other yarn. All right, let's see. I've got a mess right here. I don't even know what, what's going on. It's all tangly. Why are you all tangled up? All right. <laughs> I feel like I'm making it worse. I am. I'm making it worse. Or no, maybe I'm not. I may have to pause and figure out what's going on with this. This is my other tail and it keeps getting in. So I think I'm going to take my other tail and make sure it's separate. Are you separate now? Yeah, that's my other tail. Boop. All right. At least I have the one tail now that I'm working with. Okay, so now I'm going to cinch it tight. Er, until it's like as tight as it can possibly go. If I can figure out which end I'm pulling. I know I'm pulling this one. Okay, there we go. All right, so I'm pulling the right one. I think. All right, let me make sure. Yeah, I am. Why is this in there? Oh, I see what happened. I accidentally pulled the other tail. All right, so you're gonna cinch it tight, as tight as it will go without breaking, and don't break the yarn, because I've done that before too. It's not a big deal if you break it, it just makes a mess. And to be honest, we do not need any more messes up in this situation right now, so no more mess. All right, so then once you pull it really tight, or as tight as you can, um, because remember, you're going you're gonna to end up stitching this closed anyways. You're going to go to the other side and you're going to cinch it closed as well. So you're going to pull it. And as you can see, everything's set up so that we can stuff it in just a minute. Whoop. Hopefully. Now, it will cause problems if you have like any like snags in the yarn. That happens every once in a while with me. Um, and then I'll, I'll pull on it too tight and it'll break. I'm like, ah, oh, that's broken. But it's really not the end of the world because it's just yarn and it can be fixed. It's not like a broken heart. Anyways. All right. So you're going to take your stuffing after you cinched both of them. Um, the bottom one as tight as you can, of course. And then the top one as much as you want to or as much as you can. And then you're going to just stuff it. This is my favorite part. Well, it's not my favorite part, but it is fun for me. So I will make, like I said, I'll make a couple of tubes and then I'll just go in and I'll just stuff it. You get in there, you stuffing right now. Okay. Hopefully everybody can see it. It looks almost like a flower pot. Anyway, so then I am done. I'm going to cinch it closed. And you're like, um, Heather, this doesn't look like a pumpkin. It looks like a pot. And it does kind of look like a pot, but it's about to look like a pumpkin. And you'll see in just a minute. So I'm going to cinch that close too. Now, this is where you're going to get that, like, pumpkin-y shape. Okay, so you're going to take your darning needle, and you're going to place it through the center, pulling it up where it's joining your little friend up top, the other long tail from the, from the top portion. And then this is where I pull it and I tie it so that... And really, there's no wrong way of doing this. Just make sure it's secure. But when you pull it tight, what happens is it kind of pulls it closer together. They kind of like smush together, giving that kind of like pumpkin-y kind of look where it's like close. And this is when I tie it. And this is where occasionally I will break the yarn and I'll be like, dang it. And then all the kids will come in and be like, what? What happened? What happened? And... um. 
anyways, I feel silly because it's just, it's just yarn. All right, so now, once you've pulled it through the center, you're going to do the same thing with the other tail. You're going to kind of flip-flop them. And then you're going to pull it tight. And this is where you're going to create the ridges for the pumpkin. So instead of going through the center, I'm going to go ahead, or back through the center, I'm going to go ahead and pull the yarn up and over. So here's, the, here's where the yarn is. I'm going to pull it up and over and around, and then I'm going to bring it into the center where it had started. And then I'm going to pull it tight. You'll see in a second what's about to happen. And all right, I want I want my ridge to be right there. So move it before, like put it, put the ridge, and then you're going to pull it tight. And do you see it's starting to create this? And um, oh my goodness, you guys! I think I just got inspired. It's it's because of the it's because of you too. All right, this almost looks like a heart, doesn't it? I think I'm going to make some hearts, little heart swishy smushies, um, with this same pattern. Ooh getting inspired. All right. My husband just came in. Hello, husband. He's making faces at me. Anyways, we are finishing up the pumpkin and you're just going to keep going over and over and over and over again, wherever you want those ridges. And I kind of double up a little bit. Hello. And pull it real tight and you can see it's creating like that kind of pumpkin-y look. Pumpkin, pumpkin, pumpkin. And so before you do all this, if you're going to put a face on it, you need to go ahead. And, you should have already done it like, like way long ago. Like you should have done it when it was a tube. So this one is not getting a face. Nor do you want to see me put a face on a pumpkin right now because it takes a while. And then there's lots of like, dang it. Or undoing because I don't like it. Um, all right, so I am happy with the ridges. I'm gonna go ahead and go back to the same ridges and kind of like, and this is where you want, this is why you want the yarn to be long because you wanna keep doing it to make it a little bit more secure. And y'all, look at this yarn. Like, this is so pretty. And you could, I mean, to be honest, these little pumpkins are adorable. You could do like hand-me-down clothes. I'm just getting inspired. Like, you know, like flannel, um, shirts that are kind of getting older. You could just make the tubes and like stuff them and then do the same thing with the yarn or, or do the same thing with the fabric, making little pumpkins. Um, and and, and doing the same thing where you're kind of going through and doing the ridges. Anyway, so we are done with ridging, making the ridges. So we're going to go ahead and tie it off and then stuff this yarn in the inside. And what, like I said, what I love about this, and you can see I still have a very long tail right here. So we can cut it if we want to. But what the goal is, is to have no mess left over. And that's why I like creating these because these are perfect for de-stashing or using up those skeins that you may not know what to do with, but they're still beautiful and you want to do something with them. Um, so like you, all you need to do is you need to just take, and, and like I said, I overestimated, you can either cut or stuff, use it as stuffing inside that pumpkin. Um, you know, beforehand. I can't get it to go in. So I'm actually just going to, I'm just going to cut it. Well, I don't know. That one's not too bad. I'm going to go ahead and put it in there. All right. The other one that's super long, we're going to use that as a stem. Uh, if you want to, if you want a more realistic stem, you can choose some brown yarn. But like I said, the goal in this project is to de-stash, no leftovers, and love what you're doing. So I just ran it through the one that I don't really care for. I ran it through right here. And now, um, when I'm creating the stem part, so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to cut it. I keep going back and forth. Like I shouldn't cut it because that was the goal not to cut it, but I'm going to anyway. So, um, normally I would try to stuff it back in because you know, 
you can you can always have more stuffing. All right, so to create the stem, all I did was single crochet it. Um, you can, if you want to, use like um, a stick outside. You can use a bead, or you can just leave it alone. You don't have to have the stem. But this is what I do for my pumpkin. So I stick my crochet hook in um, in the tail, and I um, do single crochet around, creating the stem. So. and until I'm happy with the result of it. And single crochet, and I'm using these um, hooks. They are pretty sure they're knitter, Knitter's Pride. They're not marked. Actually, they're probably not Knitter's Pride. But I really like them because they're, they, I don't know, for some reason they just glide a little bit easier than some of the others. Um, now that I say that it's going to get stuck, but the only reason why it's getting stuck is because these, this yarn had like glue in it, which I'm not really thrilled with, but I mean, I'm just using it to create like something that's not going to be worn, but it had glue in it. And that I think is why it was on clearance. Um, but probably because it was, you know, it's not damaged, but it had like this hard glue from the label. Look, um, but it was, it was not real expensive. So beggars cannot be choosy. I'm just telling you what, what's going on right now. So the top part right here had like glue stuck in it. All right. So here comes, I'm coming back around to my original spot. Like I said, I'm just single crocheting. Um, and you can also use an I cord if you want to, but this is this is how I did it. I'm just giving you suggestions. Let's say you don't know how to crochet, um, and you don't want to do this part. You can always alter it to fit whatever that whatever you may have or whatever ability skill ability you are. Anyways, I'm just working along, creating this stem to cover up that hole using my crochet hook, single crocheting all the way around until I am super happy with the result. You guys, this has been like a 30 minute project, less than 30. And we're, we are done. We're just kind of adding our things in there, adding a little extra stuff. And plus I'm running my mouth too in the beginning. So I'm taking off 10 minutes. And voila, I, I'm coming back around. I did two rows of single crochet. Um, you can you can do more or less, alter it however you want it to look. Coming right back around. And now I'm going to do one slip stitch and I'm gonna pull it through. And there's my stem. And then I'm going to take my darning needle and I'm going to run it through the center and stuff that yarn into the center. So there's our little pumpkin. In under 30 minutes, we've just created this cute little little um, pumpkin for a girl or boy or whoever. Um, anyways, like, subscribe to my channel. Like I said, um, these tutorials will come more and more as I start to create different things. And I always like to pair it up with, hey, this is how you do it by hand. This is how you could possibly use your knitting machine. Or, hey, I can't figure out a way to use the knitting machine. I only know how to do it by hand. Like the stem, I guess you could do I cord, use a stick or whatever. But I don't know how to do the stem using the machine. Um, so that's how I've been creating it. All right. Um, Again, thank you so much for joining me, and um, please like, subscribe to my channel, check out my Etsy page, and um, I'm my name is Freckles Fiber Arts on on Etsy, um, but I am Heather Carew, and I am um, here to just show you different ways to use your fiber arts. And thank you for joining me.